is the Bradford Files. Why do I like get to go first? Because you're the baddest. <laughs> the Bradford Files with Rob Bradford and Kirk Minahan, featuring topics you care about and some you might not. Like today's topic, the death of sports movies. Why don't they make any good ones anymore? At all? Ever? Is it Disney's fault? Find out on the Bradford Files with Rob Bradford and Kirk Minahan. Welcome to edition number three of the Bradford Files. I'm your host, Rob Bradford. I don't know what this person is. Kirk Minahan, have you been promoted to host yet, co-host? You know, people have been asking me, why is it the Bradford Files when featuring Kirk Minahan or with Kirk? I, don't even think, I haven't got the featuring Kirk Minahan credit yet even. Well, special guest star, Kirk Minahan. <laughs> that's the thing. When, when, uh, when you had like Andy Griffiths appear in, in, and maybe that's not a good example because I just saw Andy Griffith and he, he didn't look so good. Better than Barbara Billingsley and Tom Bosley. That's true. That's but, true. um, yeah, when he appeared, it was like, you know, and featuring Andy Griffith. So you can be in and featuring. Congratulations. Thanks. So today what we're going to do, first of all, we want to thank David Ortiz for coming on <laughs> the first show as our special guest. The second show, which was wildly popular about the Red Sox offseason, we didn't deem that we needed a guest, so we didn't have one. And this show as well is, is going to be so good. We, we don't need any kind of guests because the topic is going to be... Dun, 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 dun. Kirk, go ahead. Well, you know, Rob, I'm, I'm a, like you, I'm a huge sports movie guy. Sorry, it doesn't fit the headline space. The death of the sports movie. Okay. That's the headline. Yes. Okay. That's what we're talking about today. Why is the sports movie dead? Why is that genre in the dirt? What right. happened? Well, what happened? Because I, I've been losing sleep over this. <laughs> I, and, you know, I just watched um, – well, you went to Secretariat hoping, hoping to uncover the, the mystery of, uh, of the, why the – Sports movie has died. Right. I mean, I absolutely went in the secretary with every hope that it would suck, and it delivered the goods. And then I thought you say every hope that it would turn the tide. Oh no! Yes, no, 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 no. It, and it did not. All right. Well, you know, when we think sports movie, I think slap shot, yep. Caddyshack. Yep. Both, uh, both in the seventies, right? Correct. Yep. Uh, well, Caddyshack was eighty, but yeah, eighty. Okay, and. Um, the Hoosiers. I mean, Hoosiers is probably, to me, the last great sports movie where you can say that's an iconic movie. That's in maybe my top ten movies of all time in regards to being a sports movie and making that cut. Well, you know, I think the golden age of, of the American sports film for me started with Rocky in 76, ended with Field of Dreams in 1989. The movies you just mentioned were there. Also, you've got Breaking Away, which I think is a great underrated sports movie. 70s. 70s. Uh, Raging Bull, obviously great. Eight Men Out, great. Yeah. Well, you said Rocky. Chariots of Fire won Best Picture. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about these iconic, the natural. You want to talk about uh, the original Bad News Bears, which I put up there with any sports comedy. I put that in, in Slapshot up there with any sports comedies ever made. To me, 76 to 89 was the absolute peak of American sports movies, I think. Ten or twelve great ones were made then, and I don't think we've had a great one since. That's been that's back when like Lupus could get into Studio Fifty Four, right? Yes, those are the days. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's all right. Well, um, all right. This this as a host, I'm going to steer the ship here because you're uh, the expert. Well, oh, okay. you you work for a movie company. Well, let's not get into that. Sort fine. of. Uh, so I am going to ask you. Go ahead. Your top five sports movies of all time. Well, number one for me is Slapshot. Mm -hmm. No argument about it. We'll talk about uh, Slapshot to me, we'll get to it later, is a perfect example of why they don't make great sports movies anymore. You'll never see a movie like Slapshot ever again. We'll get to why later. Number two for me is Raging Bull. Mm -hmm. Okay, which some people say is a sports movie, some people don't, but it's it's a boxing film. Three is Hoosiers. Yes. Four is Chariots of Fire. Five is Bull Durham. Wow. Chariots of Fire? Great movie. It's a great movie. (sighs) Great. Wow, I, I, you know, the the fact is, is that you know, my my standards for movies are are very archaic. I, I'll I'll be the first to admit this: is that like if I come out of a movie and I feel entertained and I feel like it passed the time, then I was pretty happy with it. And I can identify what's a great movie and what's not. Right. You walked out of Hoosiers, you say that was a great movie. I would see that over and over again. You, you walk out of Slapshot, 
which I don't. I didn't really walk out of Slapshot. <laughs> true. I've only walked out of my bedroom uh, fifty million <laughs> times after watching it on on uh, AMC or something. Oh, you mean you weren't one of those little kids whose parents brought them in and, let, and you slept while Slapshot was going? Like you see parents with like these ten month olds. That wasn't you. Is Pippi Longstocking a sports movie? Because I remember walking out of that when I was like six years old. Um, yeah, so. I, I have very low standards when it comes to movies, right. but I do know a good sports movie. For instance, go ahead. What, when talking to many people about this upcoming show, because it was a highly anticipated show, we sure, had talked yeah. about it on a Planet Mikey show. Yep. The streets were alive with with anticipation of this being aired. A lot of people brought up Miracle, and I just thought you're talking about. I know that you probably get more into this, but the cookie yes. cutter. This take a real story yep. or a semblance of a real story and make it into the cookie cutter happy ending. The the miracle just not, did not hit home, and and I was the I, I I'm going to go on record as saying I was the first in the North Shore to see Miracle. Wow! Because I saw like a 10 a.m. showing, and I think all the relatives of all the people in the movie <laughs> were also in it because they had all these former Danvers high af- hockey players in the movie, and. And so if there was ever going to be a time where you come out of it saying, hey, you know, that was a great movie because everyone was cheering, everyone was laughing, all the relatives were happy, that would have been it. And I just didn't come out of that saying, hey, that was a great sports movie. So, Well, this is what's happened, I think, the, and, it's, and it was successful. That's the thing. A movie like Blindside, hugely successful. Disney has found a formula. Uh, remember the Titans, big time successful. They just Disney it up like crazy. They slap a couple of wacky songs on. There's a few dance routines for some reason never happened. And, you know, there's some conflict, but it's not real conflict. And at the end of the day, everything works out fine. It's, it's just not how it went. It just doesn't tell an accurate portrayal of, of how these stories went. But they're okay with that. They don't care. And, and, again, these movies hit. They've all been hits. Well, not all of them. Well, I mean, Miracle was a hit. Remember, The Titans was a huge hit. The Blind Side was a, as big a sports movie as, as there ever been at the box office. So what's been the, what's been the last highly anticipated sports movie that said, okay, you know what? This is going to be the, 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 next, the next hope. The next hope in terms of we, we can hang our hat on this turning the tide that's been disappointing, a flop. Which one what has, has in, the, in the past well, 10 years? Got an Academy Award winning director back with the guy who won uh, an Academy Award winning actor, the one that, that he won for the film they did together. You got Paul Giamatti in it. You got a great story. You got the depression. You got the whole thing. That's basketball. I mean Cinderella. <laughs> I, mean, I mean Cinderella man. And, and Cinderella man didn't do anything at the box office. It didn't. didn't? No, not really? Much. Yeah, it didn't do well. And That's again, shocking. absolute hero worship for this guy. If you go back and watch that, I movie. like Cinderella man. It's it's an entertaining movie, right? Yeah, it's a great sports film. Uh, no, but it's 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 on the cusp. I mean, I think that it, it's on the cusp of cracking my top ten. Certainly. It, it, I think that your overall point is well taken. Thank you. That's the most polite I'll ever be to you in your life. <laughs> what is my overall point? The overall point is that 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 a lot of these movies have lost their balls. That you look at, and the one I keep coming back to is the Bad News Bears, and I guess that's the the poster boy for look at what they did back then and look at what they're doing now. Yep. And it, it was just the the, the purity of of. That movie, like that, you could tell that they did not care what they did at all. You have you have Buttermaker driving down the street drinking, drunk. yeah, drunk, yeah, drinking drunk. Schlitz with with kids hanging out <laughs> off the truck. I mean, it's the dirty, messy. The American <laughs> films of the 1970s, the best period ever in, in any country for filmmaking, and that was like basically like any one of those movies, except they set it in the world of Little League. You had, you know, you had that the speech that Tanner Boyle makes, that yeah. famous. Can you imagine a kid making that speech in the movie? The world. The world would explode. The, the Tea Party people would blow up movie theaters if that happened. Well, and, and it al- doesn't happen. And also, I think the creativity, like, for instance, the name on the back of the uniform was a Little Bo Peep's strip joint. Right. right. So they said, hey, you know, we can't do Chico's Bail Bonds because right. it probably went out of business. But we're going to do the next edgy thing, which would be edgy, which is the strippers and the stands and, and, and their place is sponsoring the team. It's just too obvious. Right. I mean, she, that's Chico's Bail Bonds. It's perfect. I mean, I, 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 you can reference Chico's Bail Bonds for every single facet of life. It's like a Seinfeld episode. Hell, so, yeah. yeah. And, you know, you take a character like, like, like Buttermaker. You take a character like Reg Dunlop in Slapshot. 
Like, as opposed to these sports movies today, like, these guys start and end the exact same way. There are no life lessons learned for Buttermaker. That guy's going to keep <laughs> drinking beer in cars with kids. He's going to keep doing that, that pool job he hates. He's going to be grumpy. There's no – he and Tatum O'Neill didn't really make up at the end. Reg Dunlop didn't see the light. They didn't care back then. They just wanted to tell a dirty, raunchy, funny movie. And really, to be honest, that's sort of – my larger point is the, maybe even the great the sports comedy – it's just gone. They don't Amer- – American sports comedy is gone. They just don't make movies like that anymore. It's PC police all the way. Well, let me ask you this huh. as a quick aside. At the end of Caddyshack, right. do they win or do they tie? They tied. Yeah. See, that's bizarre. I mean, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Sorry to get you out of your flow. <laughs> it's, not, it's okay. But, but, but let's use that as an example. Yeah. You would never have a tie in, in any kind of sports movie now. No. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be tied. And Rocky would never lose. Remember, Rocky lost that first time, right. too. I mean, the world is just it's, – it's just – they have a – and I don't blame them. They have a model for success. It's safe. It's, it's, it's you know – Well, you say that, but in, in the last Rocky, he lost. Well, it's true. He was 65 years old. Yeah, he – I mean, it's basically a moral victory. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Much more of a moral victory than any of the other Rocky fights. But, yeah, it, it's – I agree with you to a certain extent. So that's as far as I'm going to give you. Give you. That's all. You, no, that's it. <laughs> and the other thing is, you know, back back in 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 those days, uh, United Artists with Raging Bull, Scorsese was coming off a huge flop. New York, New York, the musical, one of your favorites. Dude, what? I know you're you, you, sports movie. You musical talent in your family. I know in your immediate family. So, but that movie flopped like crazy with De Niro and Liza Minnelli. Another one of your favorites. Another rotation. Liza Minnelli? Another early 80s rotation member for you. Can we play a game where I mention a, an actor and you actor or actress and you say what, what sports movie they were in? <laughs> Liza Minnelli. <laughs> Raging Bull. It was cop on the half a sports movie. <laughs> so he comes off a huge bomb. This is in 1980. United Artists gives him carte blanche. Anything you want, go ahead and make any movie you want. They make a black and white movie about a guy with no redeeming moral values whatsoever. Cost a bunch of money, and it totally flops. United Artists is out of business a couple of years later, but they gave Scorsese that chance. Orion Pictures gives John Sayles a chance to make a movie, a period movie, with no hits to his name, with a you know medium cast about the nineteen eighteen, uh, about the nineteen nineteen Black Sox. Do whatever you want, go for it. They go out of business a couple of years later after Eight Men Out flops. Raging Bull, Eight Men Out, great movies flops. Cut to present day. Steven Soderbergh, a director with an Academy Award. And a franchise to his credit, Ocean's Eleven, and with a name star attached, a big star, Brad Pitt attached, they bought, they back out with Moneyball. They don't want to do it. It's changed. They just want guaranteed hits now. They're not going to take chances with artists anymore. So, did you, you hear any of that? No, I did. Okay. I actually found it somewhat interesting. What's going on with you today? You, what are you talking about? That's like four. That's like four quarter. That's like full compliment. Four quarter compliments you've given me so far today. Because I'm setting you up for the big one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where, where's this going? <laughs> the, <laughs> I, I concur. I concur. I'm like Leonardo DiCaprio and Catch Me If You Can. I'm looking at Lawrence Fishburne on this monitor for this Predators movie. What movie, sports movie was he in? Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah. What was he in? Uh, asking I'm asking you. I don't know. He was he was in stakeout. Was you mentioned thing? Moneyball. Yeah, that that's setting itself up to being the next formulaic type of sports. I don't well, even well, know. Well, I don't even know what it is. Well, we're going to get to the late, uh, at some point. We're going to get to the, the last, the next great hope that's coming up. Well, I'm Go looking ahead. forward to that. Go ahead. That's a teaser. Well, all right. Well, if that's not the next great hope. What 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 is what is the next great sports movie? Because I want to jump forward. The fact is, is that if we're sitting here right now, you just saw Secretariat. Terrible. Was it? Uh, well, well, listen. No, no, no. I, I should say this. I should say this. Okay. If, if, say if, it. It passes the the Pat Minahan test, my mom's test. She goes to see that at twelve thirty on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> with drags my grandmother in there, man, just to get her in there somehow. <laughs> Sits Air down. conditioning and milk duds. Right. They sit her down and, and, and sit through that. They will be as happy as can be. They don't need – they don't want to know how realistic that movie is. They don't want to know how it matches up. They're okay with the fact that the entire movie is basically Diane Lane, something happens to her. She walks away, pouts. Somebody comes in, gives her a pep talk, tells her how great she is. She goes in, they save the day. They do this, they do that, which is not how it happened. But they don't need to know that, and they're happy with it. And I'm sure it'll make decent money, and it got decent reviews. But when you watch it, you know this is not – a movie based in reality, and it doesn't really care. Is it like that. Seabiscuit light? It's it's lighter than Seabiscuit. I thought Seabiscuit was total, total hero worship. He didn't like Seabiscuit. I liked it enough, but I'm just saying when you're when you're talking about a great sports movie, it did it did not. That's what we're talking about. It was not one. 
Well, all right. I'll ask you this question because if you're going to criticize the movie industry so thoroughly, yes, and I feel almost bad for the movie industry you're criticizing so, them so much, so bitterly. By the way, so so give me three ways to fix it. If if you're going to sit down and write a sports movie, there's yeah. Well, that I mean that's that's the problem is you can write, you can sit down and write a, a script in the vein, and Kevin Smith right now is directing a hockey movie. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's potential there, right? Slapshot four. Well, I think he's doing a movie in that vein. That that's that's one. But but, that, but that's the problem. That, well, let me jump in here, Kirk. Well, thank you for asking the question. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, until you get a good answer, I'm going to keep jumping in. That the, the my biggest problem with it is that there's no originality. That you talk about. Oh well, he's going to do uh, a hockey movie, and he's going to do a hockey movie. So right. We automatically say, well, is it going to be Slapshot? Someone does a golf movie. It's going to be funny. Is it going to be like Caddyshack? Someone does a Little League movie. Is it going to be like... Little Big League? Little Big League. Little, little big <laughs> Bad News Bears, yeah. <laughs> is it going to be... Someone, gonna, someone, does gonna, a, someone does a movie about a kid breaking his arm and then throwing 101 miles an hour. <laughs> someone, <laughs> but, someone does a movie about Robert Guillaume and Gary Coleman, Emic Man. Is it going to be like the kid in left field? So to, to me, the and this brings me back to Moneyball. Is yes. I have no idea where this movie is going. Which is interesting. I think. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Right. Is that it's 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 almost like I give them credit for trying to be original. Although I can't imagine that this is going to be a sports movie. I know that someone that is actually playing Scott Hatterberg in it, which, which thrills my father to no extent because he, <laughs> he still thinks that he should be starting over Jason Veritek right now. <laughs> but but it, so they're taking a stab at it looks like being original, but. As we sit here, can you see how that movie is going to translate at all, or the book is going to translate into a movie? You know, I I, I really don't. I was shocked when I when I, I was shocked when I heard it got optioned to a movie. I guess I shouldn't have. It was a huge bestseller. Then I was stunned when they, when they, Soderbergh and Pitt. But I mean, now you've got. I think it's going to. I think it's dangerously going to veer into the Billy Bean is smart and everybody else is stupid category. I'll tell you why. You want to know? You want to know why? You know what? Raise that flag for me. Yes. When I read that Philip Seymour Hoffman was attached to play Art Howe. You're talking about an Oscar winner, a legitimate movie star. Yeah. Why else is he going to play Art Howe in that movie? Art Howe is going to be obviously the comedic foil. He's going to be the dope. You can see him playing the dummy to Brad Pitt's smarter than anything Billy Beaton. That kind of concerns me. I think it might be, as the book as the book is all the time, Billy's right, everybody's wrong. Why did Paul D. Podesta not want to be associated with it? I don't know. You have to ask uh, Paul. Well, maybe we will. But well, is it just because they had... Uh Jonah Hill playing him. <laughs> I mean, it's just that's a, the movie is now Bennett Miller's directing it, and I mean he hasn't directed the movie since Capote, which should be interesting to see if you can now make it through two Bennett Miller movies without falling asleep. Considering we, uh, you did pass I, out fifteen I, minutes in the Capote when I, we saw that movie in Florida, it was, it was a long day of golf. I enjoyed it immensely. Oh, we saw the I was Patriots Dolphins that day. Yeah, well, golf was the day before. That's true. It all it all adds up. <laughs> the, so so we'll, we'll come back to the original point uh-huh. that we, we're we're striving for these movies to be original, right. and, and Moneyball maybe has a potential to be that. But all these other you talk about the Kevin Smith hockey movie and all these is there is there a, the ability to have a unique movie is a unique storyline? We've talked about this before. The to me the obvious book that should be turned into a movie is Catcher. Deep Drive. Oh yes, well that one. Yes, good. That's well we can't we can't discuss that. Right. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that's in, that's in the works. It's in pre production. <laughs> uh, catcher, the Catcher is Spy. Right, right, right. You never read that book. Sure, I did. You did? I actually did. did you really? Yeah. Oh, all right. I also saw the um, the Sports Century, <laughs> right? Which is, pretty which, is much way, is, which is a weird way of saying you read the book. Yeah, which pretty much is the same, exact same as reading the book. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Mo Berg's story is something that nobody really knows about. I mean, people know sports fans. Some sports fans know about, it, but it's definitely an under the radar story. And you could just set it as a period piece and just tell it over the course of four or five years, and I think it would be a, a terrific movie if it was done right. Yeah, but even then, does that does that even translate into a sports movie? That's more of a that's like an espionage movie. I mean, yeah, you know, it's sort of but with a backdrop of of being a sports movie. You know, one other thing is, I think back in I think the seventies and eighties also got lucky. Excuse me, and that you got guys like Costner, like Kurt Russell, guys who looked like athletes, guys who sort of gave off that vibe. And I'm not sure those guys. You don't who who's out there right now that's going to do that? Chris Pine. That's what I mean. I mean, who's like the who plays Crash Davis today? Uh, I don't know. 
I'm sure someone could play Crash Davis. But you know what I mean. Costner fit right in. He looked like he belonged there. Well, how big a movie star was Crash? And I'm just trying to think back. Just untouchables. So he was just getting going. The no, momentum. But, but, was, but, but I mean, no way out. I mean, he was he 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 was yeah. But he was there though. What was the movie? The bike racing movie. American Flyers. American Flyers. <laughs> you know, that wasn't a bad movie. It's on my top sixty-four, by the way. Well, okay, that's your problem. Just saying. I say it wasn't. A, that's, that's quite. That's, that's quite a compliment to it. <laughs> top sixty-four. Well, it's in my top sixty-five. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'm just saying. No, that wasn't a bad movie. But even that movie, if that came out today... It, I would never come out today. Yeah, it would be different. It would be like... Well, because there, there, there's... Yeah, there's there's not enough to it. There's it's It was pretty vanilla in regards to the the storyline, the, 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 scene, the scenery, the, the, spe- the special effects. <laughs> All of this. It, it, was pretty, it was a pretty vanilla movie, but it wasn't a bad movie. But you're right. I don't think it would come out today because people would say, well, it's, it's too vanilla. Alexander Paul Nude scene. Yes, I know that. Oh, okay. And in case people don't know that, that's the Baywatch star. We're gonna, do we have to reference that to these people listening? They know that is. No, they don't. And one of the great 80s what happened to her is your girl Ray Dawn Chong. Yes. She had a good run. I liked her. She and Soul Man. Tommy Chong's daughter. Yes, I know that. What, oh, is, it, is that true? Yeah. Oh, uh, she was in Soul Man. Yes, Tommy is, Chong. What mo- sports movie was he in? Uh, Judgment of Nuremberg. <laughs> I actually saw. I won't ask you what what sports movie Cheech was in because that's that's no, obvious. He's obviously, he was, Tin Cup. He was, uh, Ray McAvoy's caddy. Yeah, but he was also playing a priest on a, on a TV movie I saw last night. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but yes, uh, Ray Don Chong was in Soul Man, and she was married to see Thomas Howe in real life. Well, that's the reason Soul she Man did is it. one of my favorite movies ever made about a guy who goes in blackface and <laughs> attends Harvard University. It probably would be the top five. It probably be the top five in that kind of qualification. Why don't they make? But probably be in the top the top five lowest in that qualification as well. Next week, why don't they make great black? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of movies that would never get made, <laughs> I, mean, I think that's probably a good thing. But. Uh, we're, 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 I don't know. We're, we're trying to solve the problem, trying trying to break the code of why there are no great sports movies anymore. And and my thing was because no one's coming up with an original idea. And and I gave kudos to Moneyball for at least maybe attempting that, even though I have no idea what it's about. But I think society's gotten dopier too with with these hideous TV shows, all this reality stuff. And I think they. They're okay seeing a movie that's just presented. I don't think they need to be challenged. I did that sports. I ranked those sports movies a couple of years ago on the site. Yes. The feedback I got was like, what are you talking about? There's no more great sports movies. Because I think almost all of my top 20 movies were from that era. You know, Varsity, Varsity Blues is a great sports movie, they oh, said. Miracle is a great sports movie. Well, that, it, that's, that's, a, that's a good point because – Miracle is kind of like the standard bearer when it comes to the Varsity Blues crowd. Yeah, it's like a great – yeah, right. That's their great is it, Yeah, because if, if people – and I'm sure that if we were teenagers again and we saw that and we say, hey, you know what? Miracle was a great movie. But I can honestly say that, you know, I saw Hoosiers when I was a teenager and Hoosiers isn't anywhere near – doesn't fall in any sort of category with any one of those. We were much more sophisticated back in the day. Oh, weren't we? Yes. I, I can't remember any other any other movies around that era that I like so much as Hoosiers. What, like 87, 88? Yeah. For sports movies, you mean? Or just in yeah, general? sports movies. You didn't, like, you didn't think Bull Drum was a great movie when you first saw it? I like Hoosiers a lot better. Yeah. I actually thought Eight Men Out was a little slow. Really? See, I think it's – one thing about Hoosiers, though, when you get older and you watch it, it still stands. But, I mean, like anything else, you can find flaws in it. No, actually, I, I, I can find plenty of things you can't find flaws in. Like what, what else? <laughs> Oh well, if, for instance, if I made a sports movie, there would be no flaws in well, it. That's true, that's true. But one, but the you know, you talk about the classic sort of formula genre. Now you have David O. Russell who directed Three Kings. Um, you've got Christian Bale and you've got Mark Wahlberg ready to do this Mickey Ward yes. movie, which is coming out. And this is the, this is sort of the next shot. It's, it's, but I mean, you've seen the previews. For it her. looks like, unfortunately, it looks like more pain. It looks the, is, the same thing, which is shocking because David O. Russell is a really talented director. Christian Bale. By the most part, makes interesting choices. I would have had a lot of hope for this movie, and I think it's a great subject matter. So, but they don't even get into the. Um, they don't. Is the the Gotti stuff? You Gotti. They don't even go. They don't go up to Gotti. No, which which is fine. That's that's okay too. You don't really need that. The Ward and his brother story is good as long as it's told. I, I would disagree with that because the whole, Mickey War was defined by those Gotti fights. I mean, if you wanted to end. If you wanted a punctuation of a story, that's what made the Mickey Ward story so great. Is those Gotti fights. 
and maybe they're setting it up for the sequel. I don't, I don't think that's. <laughs> I, I don't think that's 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 really what's what's going. As someone who was up in the Lowell Sun, yes. worked up in the Lowell Sun uh-huh. in the heart of of Mickey Ward country, I can tell you that that movie will be bigger in Lowell. Than, than the perfect storm was in Gloucester. That's going to be an unbelievable event for those guys. And Good for them. <laughs> well, we hope to have, you know, I'm sure we'll have a member from that, of that cast on at some point in the podcast. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, we only get special guests. When we have a guest, we make it a big wig. David Ortiz has, all, has all been the only one to make the cut. And really, you know, I think that we, 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 we this, is, this is actually the second time in our podcast history we've touched on movie, uh, favorite movies. And David Ortiz, if, if I'm not mistaken, David Ortiz did not have a sports movie in his top five. Unless you say Anaconda was a sports movie. I think Rambo three that volleyball scene was deleted, but it's on the it's on the director's cut. Pink Panther also. Pink Panther might have been a sports movie. I am standing by. Next time I see David, I'll ask him this. Yeah. I am maintaining that he was talking about the Peter Sellers version and not the Steve Martin remake. I have faith in his in his film going. Judging by the other four films on the list, I have to believe that his film <laughs> his film knowledge is strong enough. I, 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 as much as I like David Ortiz, I yeah. would have to disagree with that analysis because I honestly think he probably saw it with his kids the night before, the Steve <laughs> Martin version. It just kind of went down that road. Well, so let's loop back. I, well, I'm, I'm the host. I can steer the ship. I, I, yeah, I got one point on this. Yes. I think another thing that's hurt the sports comedy genre because a lot of these have been big hits too. And I know these movies are funny and stuff, but they're, they're, nothing, they're, they're safe and they're nothing like the old school ones. Are these Will Ferrell comedies? Yeah, but they're in, you know they're entertaining. Yeah, I know, but but what's the best Will Ferrell sports movie? I don't like any of them. I'll be honest. Oh, you, that's good. That's good that you're honest. Uh, we don't, <laughs> even though we take the chance of offending Will Ferrell. Um, I, you know, you, you like those movies better than me. So, oh the, well, I'll tell you what the um, what was the basketball one? The one with Woody Harrelson. Semi pro. Yeah, terrible. That was that was I mean it might have been that I was saw it at one thirty in the morning in Fort Myers movie theater, but that was a terrible movie. Uh, Talladega Nights, it, you know, it w- had some chuckles. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm saying it's just a different it's just a different world. I mean, you know, you look at you look at the movie like, and we'll go back to Slapshot, which I I, I think is the best sports movie ever made. I, I think you might you you agree with that or no? Or you're, you're Hoosiers. <sighs> Yeah, no, no, I would agree. I think Slapshot, Slapshot to me might be the best movie ever made. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing no, at? I, that's just a good, you just said it with such, like you just, like you, your eyes, like you just re, you had a realization right there. <laughs> well, <laughs> you might be right. I mean, I love Slapshot, but it's just like. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. You, you've really been paying much attention at this point. And all of a sudden, you just you just sort of went, wait a minute, Slapshot. I think Slapshot would be the best film ever made. I remember a movie called Slapshot. Why did I think of that before? It's, it's not. This isn't a complicated. It's not like I was I was I was staying up all night thinking about this. Well, thanks for the prep. The uh... no, because I already know. I know what movies I like. I know what movies I've seen, and. And Slapshot, I like, I've seen, and I might actually put it on top of my list. How about All the Right Moves? Again, it's not it's not a great movie, but it's actually a movie that feels real. I think you could pair All the Right Moves to a movie like Varsity Blues, which I think sort of takes the extreme of that whole world and sort of cartoon makes a cartoon out of it. I think All the Right Moves at least tries to tell a story. I think that's a big that's a that's a good example of a difference between that era's movies and and the movies made today. Oh, so where would you put Friday Night Lights wedged in Very between good. those two? Friday Night Lights is a really good sports movie. And I, you know, it's a rare triple crown. Great book. Really good sports movie and a, and a good TV show. I, I, there's no, there's nothing else. Other wow, than, that is other a triple than, crown. Other than Deep Drive that can make that claim. Yeah, I can see uh, Billy Bob Thornton and putting the crown on his head like <laughs> Babe Ruth smoking the cigar. Buzz Bissinger. It, you know, it, it was a good movie. I, I good. I didn't really like the way it was presented a whole bunch. Um, any given Sunday. I, again, like it, way too extreme. Well, like the world's not uh, that uh, world is not uh, like that. Any given Sunday was all that's wrong with Oliver Stone movies. Which is, is he, he tries too hard. He tries too hard to put to put his mark on the movie and with camera angles, with with flashbacks. It, it was just it was just too much, and that was one of my biggest complaints about that movie. Yeah, it's way. Yeah, it was all the all the stuff that drives you nuts about Oliver Stone. And I think it's a guy who wanted to make a sports movie, isn't really that knowledgeable about football, 
would read a couple of articles and listen to some people who told him how crazy he was, and they put out there. I mean, everybody. I mean, not everybody is like that. No. Al Pacino, not every coach is like that. <laughs> I mean, not I, every owner is yeah, like Cameron Diaz. Not every hooker is like Elizabeth Berkeley. Well, every hooker is like Elizabeth Berkeley. Okay. Berkley. All right. Fair enough. So, so where do we go from here, Kirk Minahan? Well, I just, you know, I, again, I just think it's... it's Hold I, on. This is the where do we go from here. This is like we've go, we talked about oh, the done? past. No. Oh, okay. We've talked about the past. We've talked about, we've talked about the present. And now we're going to talk about the future. Where do we go from here? I think what you've seen is what you're going to see. I mean, you're just going to see these 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 Disney movies that are, like I said, absolutely fine for the uh, for the 17 and under and 50 and older crowd. And I think the rest of us are just going to be just you know crawling through the dirt looking for that great sports movie. Well, <laughs> <laughs> is it is it a, is it dirt or is it milk duds? Is it, <laughs> crawl is it delicious the, melted caramel? What do they have at the at the one? They have like fry clams. What? We talk, oh no, they had they had the shrimp. The shrimp. I remember you. Oh, uh, sh- I tell you what. Oh when God. the new movie theaters open, it was uh, like they had the the one in the in the uh, Liberty Tree Mall. Yeah, yeah. So they had the stand in the corner, which was like supposed to be like almost like a Starbucks. Right. And I actually think I drank. I never drink coffee, and I think I, I got like some sort of did you really cold coffee thing because it was smothered in whipped cream, and because I could, and then, and then I you know you get the fried shrimp because you can because all of a sudden it's presented in front of you, <laughs> and then you realize fried shrimp to bring or anything like that mozzarella sticks, buffalo wings to bring into a movie theater is such a disservice to everybody in that movie theater. It's unbelievable. That never crossed your mind when you purchased it? No, I just was thinking delicious fried shrimp. Mm. To wash down with milk duds and a 72-ounce Coke. We'll get to the, the future in, in one second. But you're like me. I, I get called on this once in a while. It's not a big deal if you go to the movie by yourself. Well, this is a whole new show. Well, two seconds. It's not a big deal if you go to the movie by yourself. No. It, it's, this is, in life, this is one of the most baffling arguments I've I've come across. The world is the world is split up between two people. I don't care about men and women, this and that, whatever views on whatever. It's can you go to the movie by yourself or can you not? It, it, and it is unbelievable when it, it's like talking to a wall to people. It, I am there are something most things in life you can have a discussion with people and say, okay, you know, I see your side of it and you see your, my side of it. But when I say to someone, I said this to the other day to an intern, I say, well, do you go to a movie by yourself? She said, never. I would never, ever do that. Like, that would be the lowest thing I could ever do. What do you, and I don't ever go to movies not by myself. <laughs> I mean, I don't, serious, serious, a, a lot of it is out of necessity because, you know, you have kids and someone has to stay home with the kids. And, and you know, my wife never wants to see the mo- same movies I do anyway. She wants to see Boat Trip? <laughs> well, I'm on the road a lot. <laughs> so... You know, a lot of it's out of necessity, but the more the more that you go to the movies by yourself, the more you realize, A, you don't need anyone sitting there, and you got to have the seat between you, by the way. We know that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just want to clarify that. You don't need someone else there because the only talking you, you might do, you might do, is in the previews. That's it. That is literally it. You don't, you don't want to talk to anybody during the movie, so who cares? I mean, it's okay if somebody wants to go to the movie with you. But you got to understand, there's not going to be any words said. So what's the difference? It's not like you're going to dinner by yourself. No, and it, it's, in, it, at this point, it's also not like you're going on a date where you say, "Okay, we'll go to the movie, and then we're going to go out to eat, and you have something to talk about." Well, that's more of a state of your marriage. That's more of a comment on what are, what are you saying? No. About that? What, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, talk about I'll, I'll go back to the point of that my wife and I usually don't see the same <laughs> movies. So, what, what movie did we see? Go ahead. Keep talking while I think about what movie we just saw. No, I like this. Well, I don't know. It's not we, that Kirk Cameron one, was it? <laughs> no. 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 We did see that movie together, um, and now we own it. <laughs> um, but we, we, we just saw My wife and I saw The Social Network together. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. Well, I saw that by myself, and I encouraged my wife to see it by herself, <laughs> and we'll, we'll break it down later. But so, what did she think? Well, did you have a nice, uh, nice macchiato after and uh, and discuss the the merits? Yeah, of the, it was a great the, acoustic band playing at the at the coffee house out, out by where I live. And we, we we talked about it for hours. You yeah. know, honestly, we, we, this is going to loop back to. Yeah, let's the, get back. To the, well, this is going. Yeah. Well, you're the one that talked I'm, I'm about. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're, it's your show. <laughs> this loops back to the the how movies are presented and how movies are made. Yeah. I actually find myself more than ever 
wanting to see documentaries. I was going to get to that. Yeah, right. Because to me, if you want to talk about the next great sports movies, those are the next great sports movies. Well, we saw one. Yeah. Which one was that? The Pat Tillman story. Yeah, that was good. Really good documentary, though. Yeah, it was I mean, good. But the 30 for 30, some of them are really good. I mean, that should, that, that, I think that's that's a good point that we – documentaries, and I think they're just on all the time. It's sort of presented that way, and, and now you can see them. And, and as opposed to 20 years ago, you'd never go see a sports documentary. They didn't exist. That, I think, is where the great movies are to be found. Now. Well, I, I can honestly say that, you know, if I go on iTunes and I'm going to download a movie – I'll first go to documentaries. And, and too many of them now, and the ones that you're able to select are about the world crisis or the you know how bad food is for you and so forth and so on. But the thirty for thirty one for ESPN for pure entertainment value, I would I would download those first, or I would even spend my time watching those rather than going to to see a movie um, sans the milk duds and the diet coke, but. The the one they did on um, on Vlade Divac and really Dravin Petrovic, great. Uh, great. The Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes one's great. awesome. Some stunk, but, but well, the fantasy sports one stunk. I thought the Red Sox one stunk, but yeah, that wasn't it. Wasn't that good? Uh, you know, I mean, the, the the problem the the ones that weren't as good in that series were the ones that they forced other stuff in like the fantasy sports when they were forcing stuff in left and right the red sox when they were forcing bill simmons and lenny clark in. terrible there was no need for I that i didn't like the jordan one i did not think that was good that was by ron shelton who's obviously made great sports there was this wasn't a lot to that no there wasn't and the uh, university of miami one really good that was good yeah i mean it's been really USFL good usfl one Terry very Fox good one was good i thought i haven't seen that one yet it was good okay i'll take your word for it but much yeah. like much like you, Terry Fox ran 16 miles and then gave up. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe I did it as an homage to Terry Fox. Actually, you ran about 6,000 miles on one leg into the wind, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm sure that calf was eight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he understood. His family wasn't waiting at mile 16 <laughs> with a car <laughs> and a ride home and, and, a, and a free excuse to, to go to P.F. Chang's because my wife would let me eat anything I wanted. It was awesome. What a day. Oh, that's the best part. Yeah. So, but you're right. I think yeah, – I thought the I, – I guess I like the Tillman story more than you. I thought it was – No, I like the Tillman story. I mean, something you, you would have never seen, you know. And, that, and put it this way. If they had made a movie about Pat Tillman in 2006, imagine if Disney had made a Pat Tillman movie. No, oh, oh my goodness! You know, I think that's a you know. You, oh, and, and I'm sure that you know places wanted to and tried and yeah, and I'm sure the family didn't. Yes, but anyways, the the future sports movies. I think you're right. A lot of it's documentaries, but like I said, I just don't think you're going to see that stuff because I don't think the studios really have any interest in, in in taking risks. And to be honest with you, for for good reason. I mean, if Thanks. if if the, the Blind Side works, yeah, which well, it, that's what I said. Which it did, yeah, and you can get the the pink hat crowd there. Right, then you do it. Oh, no doubt. All right. Well, we got to get going because this has been a great podcast, but all good things have to come to an end. So, I, your, You're going to read your email of the week? Uh, no, I'm not going to read my email of the week. Fan mail of the week? You want to read yours? What no, did Kirk, no, it's fine. What did Kirk M. sucks? He's been quiet lately. I don't know. Really? I'm actually worried about him. No, you happen. No. You, uh, you, come oh, on. Oh, I, I made, we crossed over. I made the connection with him. Yeah, you, yeah. You, once you made the connection with him, yeah, it's, it's, it's all over. There's no, there's no way that maybe he's just been won over by my writing as of late. Yeah, you made the connection with him. Yeah. So we'll, we'll leave it with this. Go ahead. What sports movie do you want to see made? What What is the solution? What sports movie is out there to be made? And and I Kirk mean, Minahan no, directs knows? this I, one. I don't know. You know who knows? Well, well, okay. What What sport? What What genre? What sport and genre? <laughs> you know, interestingly enough, I think there's not been a great movie made about the NBA in, okay. at all. I don't think you know, Hoosier's a great basketball movie, but that's it. There's nothing else that comes close. I mean, it's you've just got you know miss after miss after miss. You can go over it. There's been probably thirty of them the last thirty years, and I think you know we could pick any period of time you want. I think the ABA would be an interesting movie. ABA versus the NBA and how how that all came about. But the the truth of the matter is, with a lot of those stories now, you could probably make a better documentary about it. Yeah, and the thing is, I think that the the common thread of what we're looking at being a unique and interesting sports movie is probably ending with a not a fair fairy tale ending. It, it, that's to me, that's the bottom line. Is it? Right. It, that's what's going to separate itself, and people don't want to see that because let's be honest: when you walk out of a movie. 
it can suck for the majority of it. But if the ending's good, like, oh, that was okay. And people understand that. Movie makers understand that. Does Tom Bosley dying finally put an end to that Lou Gorman proposed movie project? Or is that... <laughs> <laughs> Especially since Barbara Billingsley was playing his wife. <laughs> Who plays Larry Anderson? <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, and we'll be back next week, maybe with a guest. We don't know yet. Uh, if you have any questions for Kirk Minahan, send them on Twitter, at Kirk M. K-I-R-K-M-I-N. There you go. At Kirkman. And, uh, and feel free to weigh in on this subject, and maybe we'll break it down in another one soon. All right. See ya.